Where Uganda in Yuma? Uganda in Yuma, and I was telling you, Uganda. But you don't want to do it as police. It's a public court, it's a day where people are working, it's an open court where you are allow, not allowing us to enter. I have no answer for you. Sorry? I have no answer for you. So on whose orders are you acting? You can call the, 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 the sports person over the judiciary. I hope you have with the contact. So you've been ordered by the judiciary not to allow people here on a working day like this? Of course, sir. And even a public place. Uh, <laughs> Nsale yo muenda, ibadde ya alwa lero. Kakati, nizi janjufu. Necho kubiri, mvakuwa wabira, abalamuzi, munana abakoti eno, sabalamuzi ya soka, neba nino musambo kulio pia weli, mugamba, uh, chivita, uh, muhanguzi, tuhaise, arachi amoko, nino mlamuzi muenda, uwena isa ya bojebe isi za mwagulo, nino jistro wa koti eno. Kubaru waziri ni no bawa kukopi iba tegele chike na mumazo. Yeso kwa yukuyende. Yeso kwa yukusatu. Na wabila government ya wano, ole mvye jari mkulonda. Ni mkula angiri ya kalulu. Nete kawo defense mkoti ya East Africa. Kati nzenzi demo defense ya wano. Kwa wano mkoti ya East Africa. Hawa sika liba ngamba. Dero kote za koze. Ni mba gamba ya East Africa na yote ya koze wa gadeo. Ni kote ya zita koze, haba mba ingila wala bafuruma. Dero si public holiday. But then you got in Nashin to our Kuli demo, Taina Songa Jam, Peramogan Jamo Abidango Moon. Navy, Nashin to your deepest one in your number. In Jamo Abidango Moon, Kubanga, Taina, the Chanako Chanda Gacha, Vudova, what Dova, one in Chigama, Gale, Office and Yaga Government, the Rossi Public Holiday, in Zize, Omlamus was Prime Court Yahoo de Guru, Nangamba, Jamko Sawa, Tan, Ku and Salayo. Nino Funa in Sala, Nateka Oksawa Kuang, and the Swasent and Mokot, Nazia and Koza, Muna Makula. Kakati sema yuwa chi ati wengine dola gamba wengine dola mukubiri desi mwa nua gani yoyju kuat paka wewe kutu seko ne mukubiri la lokeichi ne muga polisi ya mukola chuo ano angambi mboka kanzi ri na kana ba kumzi ri da ne mukubiri la mukito mugezwa judiciary ne muga kote zaruka dio kubanga zigaraci ngabazi tu gani ngati office government disi kola ya gamba sema yuwa chi ati wengine dola gamba wengine dola mukubiri desi mwa nua gani yoyju kuat paka wewe kutu seko ne mukubiri la lokeichi ne muga kote zaruka dio kubanga zigaraci ngabazi tu gani ngati office government disi kola ya gamba around 10:50, I reached this gate for, two, for three purposes. The first purpose was to get my ruling from Justice Kisache, who made it clear yesterday that she would make hard, hard ruling in my recuse application against Owini Dolo today at 11 a.m. Secondly, I've complained against seven, eight justices of this court, including the Chief Justice and the Registrar, about their conduct yesterday. And I'm supposed to serve them copies. Thirdly, I sued the Uganda government in South Africa Court of Justice, which is housed here, on a point which is so, uh, 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 about the conduct of elections. Upon that, I had come for my rejoinder today. But the court staff are telling me, not actually not the court staff, the, the, the police here commanded by one Navidia is telling me the court is not working. Yet I can see the CJ Chief Justice is in, judges are in, and court staff are entering. So I wanted to know why. I've called Onyidolo, he has refused to pick my calls. I've called uh, Lokech to ask him why 
his police is behaving as it is behaving. He has just told me he will get back to me as not. I've called him, uh, is it the PRO person, uh, the spokesperson? He has refused, uh, actually he told me let, let him find out he has not got, got back to me. So that's why I'm here, I want to be here. I, I, I found my case, I paid court fees. I'm entitled to get my judgment, the ninth judgment, to see the reasons why of the judge. And uh, I'm sitting here because the judge may come looking for me to give my ruling. So that's why I should not move from office. Where I'm sitting is outside their premises. This is now, this is a road reserve. <laughs> So let, let's be here. Patience works. Patience works. Let's be patient. I think they will get some legal sense because there's no legal justification for what they are doing. Let, let me wait. This Saturday we left here at 6. So since we left here at 6, so here we, uh, let's see what, is, what, 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 what comes up. You threatened to sue individual police officers. What do you say? The, the one, the, there's a Navidia, an ASP. I've asked her to give me a document telling her to close the gate. She say, she's, she, 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 she's showing me none. Police officers must obey only lawful orders. So I don't know if they're working on legal orders of Onyidolo. Then that commanding officer, the ASP, I, I, I may take her on because she's derogating my rights. I'm entitled to a court decision. I'm entitled to a fair hearing. Fair hearing includes getting a, a, a decision. I'm entitled to, you know, I'm a Ugandan. So I can't come to court and then I'm blocked without any lawful excuse. There's a public holiday, it's not what? It's unfortunate that I have to address you here in front of the gates of the Supreme Court of Uganda. And I've come here to make a very brief statement. It's a sad day for our country that the events, the unconstitutional events that started unfolding yesterday in the premises of the Supreme Court are continuing today. Yesterday, when I was reading my consolidated ruling, which covered the ruling on the recusal application filed by Mr. Mavili Ismale, I specifically stated that I could not, it had not been called yesterday, and I could not uh, pronounce my ruling on it. By, I discovered Mr. Mavirizi uh, introduced himself in court, and when I discovered that he was in court, I made an order that I would deliver that part of the ruling today at 11 a.m. When I arrived at the court this morning, the tent where the court has been sitting was being dismantled. That was understandable because the court has been hired, the tent was being hired, of course, at great expense. And the reason why the court had moved to the tent was because we are operating during COVID times when we were having high numbers of people, parties, and lawyers, and the judges sitting at the same time. So I immediately talked to the court supervisor and requested that the Supreme Court courtroom, sorry, the Supreme Court courtroom on the second floor prepare the ruling. And I'm glad to report that the court was accordingly prepared. I waited in my chambers for Mr. Mavizi to show up in the courtroom so that I could also go to the courtroom. As I address you to now, it is coming to one o'clock, almost two hours later. And I received a call from one of you saying you are waiting outside. Ordinarily judges are not supposed to address to work through the meeting. But at the same time, I cannot keep quiet when we are seeing these kinds of things unfolding when the Chief Justice is actually in residence. I made inquiries from the registrar. He's not party to the closing of the court. I am the administrative judge of this court, and I have not made this directive. 
this is the Chief Justice's court and he's in his office. So um, I inquired from the police officers, I will not mention the name, why the gates of the Supreme Court are being locked, one, to a litigant, and two, to the members of the public, because my understanding of public includes the media. We have just concluded the presidential election petition where you had access to the courts. And the recusal application I'm supposed to read was filed under the same petition. So I am very, very surprised that somebody has ordered an unprecedented closure of the Supreme Court of Uganda to the public when the Chief Justice of Uganda is in residence and for two hours he has done absolutely nothing to change this unconstitutional and unlawful uh, order. So it's against my, the practice of judicial officers to refrain from speaking to the press. I have been forced to come and address you. Because Mr. Mavidis was supposed to receive a ruling from me. And apparently, this is continuing because there has been an effort to gag me to read my ruling, which is unconstitutional. I also wanted to make another, now that I'm here, I also wanted to correct an impression which has been given by the official spokesperson of the judiciary, Solomon Muyita, who, without talking to me, has gone, went ahead yesterday to speak to the press, and who has also issued a statement maligning my name when he has, doesn't have the facts. I will, at an appropriate time, issue my own statement about the developments that led to yesterday's events. And since Mr. Muyita, the judiciary spokesperson, has proved to be inclined either to speak from a, an uninformed position or to speak on orders of powers that be, from now on, I'll take the responsibility to communicate the position that I hold to the press directly. But the official position as of now is that my file, which was confiscated yesterday, has not been returned to me. This morning, I went to the registry to recover the file, and I was informed by the court office, uh, staff that the file was not returned. This is the place where files are supposed to be kept if they are not kept in the judges' chambers. I inquired from the one of our registrars who is in office, he was not aware about the file. The registry staff informed me that they had left the files in the boardroom, which I checked yesterday and the files were not there. This morning, I went back and checked in the boardroom and the files are not there. So I'm left with no conclusion that my file is still, has been confiscated, is still being confiscated by none other than the Chief Justice of Uganda. Because yesterday, as I approached the tent, his security detail, which is attached to him for his personal security, is the one which removed the files from the tent where the court has been sitting. And it's very unfortunate. So since the files are not in the official registry, I tried to access the Chief Justice, he was engaged. I tried to access his personal assistant, he was not in office. But the position as of now is that my file is still confiscated, unconstitutional. And that is very, very unfortunate. So with those, no, I'm not going to address Uganda, sorry. So with those words, uh, I want to say to 
the litigant who was supposed to receive his ruling that I would deliver his ruling at sometime next week on the date that I will communicate to him. I hope the communication in his has uh, his uh, since he's unrepresented. I'm sure there is an address that where you know his official telephone number and whatever other contacts are indicated. So the communication will be to him. And as for you, the members of the press, you and I know the provisions of the Constitution. This court is a public court. No one, no one has the authority to lock it during office hours. That is not the judiciary that the people who made the Constitution, all the people of Uganda, that's not the judiciary that was envisaged. And it's very, very unfortunate that this is happening under the watch of none other than the Chief Justice of Uganda.